Welcome to the Moodle quiz series uh, videos. This video is going to show how to create a basic uh, quiz without question banks or categories. Uh, so you're going to want to navigate to your course and uh, when you get there go ahead and turn editing mode on. Um, then navigate to the location in your course where you'd like to put the quiz whether it be weeks, topics, units, however you have your content organized. Then choose add an activity or resource. You can filter by activities and then add a quiz. For this quiz, we're gonna call it uh, John Locke and you can put a description in if this is actually a quiz you're doing. And then um, let's look at some of these settings. For the timing, you can set it to open when you want it to and close. You can also put a time limit on the quiz. Uh, this sometimes is a good idea if you're using like open book uh, and you don't want them to have all the time in the world to um, look up the answers. Um, uh, when time expires, it, can, it tells you, so if a student, if you do set a time and a student's in the middle of the quiz, this can, you tell it what to do, uh, how to handle it, like submit it automatically despite they're open. Uh, give them a grace period um, or attempts must be submitted before time expires or they're not counted. Um, so you have some options there. Then the grade, uh, if you have your categories and you're set up in your grade book, um, you'd put it into which category, which is probably going to be assessments. Uh, you can put a grade to pass if you'd like. Um, and then you've got attempts. Uh, most of the time I only allow one attempt, but if it's like for practice, you might want to allow two, three or unlimited attempts so that they, they learn the skills through repetition and then I choose the highest grade as the grading method layout you can do every question this is how the questions appear in the quiz um, when they start it I usually will do about every 10 questions because you don't want you know if you have a lot of questions you don't want that scroll of, of uh, death but once I show the, uh, the the actual questions you'll see that there's a couple different ways that students can um, navigate the quiz. Um, question behavior. Uh, I usually always, especially if I have multiple choice questions, um, shuffle within the answers. Um, and then how uh, questions behave, you, you just want to leave that set to deferred feedback. Um, this is always tricky. I see a lot of instructors make mistakes here. I basically disable almost everything except what their score is. Um, I don't even let them see if it was uh, which answers they got correct because you know they can share this uh, uh, with people and you, you want to keep your your quiz um, you know reputable. Um, then after it's closed, then it, everything opens up. For the appearance, you can have it show an image if you'd like, um, so that if you're walking around face to face, you can see uh, their picture in the upper right hand corner of the browser. Uh, there is a safe browser. Um, uh, you, you can play with this and see. I would recommend um, creating a student account and testing it before using it. Uh, these are difficult because different browsers handle them different ways. There's also probably issues with mobile devices. Um, so I just usually say no. Um, extra restrictions, you can put a password on. That can be useful. I used it in face-to-face -face settings when I wanted everyone to start the quiz at the same time. So if I was helping students get logged in, um, it kind of had everyone waiting until I gave them the password. Then I give them the password and then everyone is into the quiz and it's working. Or you might want to create a password so you can give the quiz to specific students and um, not have to worry about doing groups and groupings. Uh, you can give feedback and this is overall feedback for the end of the quiz, not for the questions. Um, then you got your common module settings. You can pretty much leave that uh, at default. Again, if you're using groups, you can um, set those up and then they will appear here. You'd probably just choose uh, separate groups or visible groups, um, you know, uh, based on your group settings. Uh, you can restrict access. Um, you can say that they need to complete other assignments before they can take this quiz um, and so forth. Activity completion. Uh, I show activity when conditions are met by with the following variables. They must be able to view it um, and they must receive a grade. Um, I don't usually... I wouldn't say they have to have a passing grade, but you can set these settings however you like, or you can leave them default. Uh, if you have competencies in your course, uh, if you did want to add them in, these would be uh, learning objectives that are the entire quiz uh, would pertain to. And then in the questions, you can tie individual competencies to the questions. So we're going to go ahead and save and display, and we've made it halfway through. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a question. Um, 
when you get to this page, um, we can set the maximum grade later once we determine how many questions we have and how many points each question is going to be worth. Um, and yes, you'll want to shuffle within your questions as well. But click on Add and choose New Question. And we're going to do Multiple Choice and Add. Now I already have these set up in a uh, Word document. So we're going to go ahead and grab our first question name or put it in here. And then I also put it here. This is so that when it displays in that window we just were looking at um, and you got 50 questions, you can see which question's which. Um, so I always do the question text and the name the same. Um, the status is going to be ready and the default mark and any general feedback you want for this specific question. You can set it to have multiple answers, which would be multiple select, I believe. Uh, but we want to keep this as just multiple choice. And we do want answers to shuffle. And we want the number, the choices to be lettered like A, B, C, and D. Um, you can, I'm going to show the standard uh, instructions just to see how they show on the actual page when we finish here. So let's add some answers in. So we've got A, and this is a slower process. Um, in later videos, I'll show how to import, and that makes this much uh, less painful. So we got B. And this is the correct answer. So for the correct answer, you're going to select that that's 100%. And, you know, in these questions, you can um, not points if you wanted to for the incorrect answer, or you can make it worth partial points. Um, that's why you have all these different numbers in here. Um, so then we'll go to choice three or C. And our last choice. Um, one thing to note in multiple choice, if you're going to do like all the above, um, because your choices scramble, I would just simply write the text as uh, um, all of these answers are correct. So that if it scrambles, uh, it's not going to be kind of out of place. Like all the above and it's the first answer, you know. <laughs> um, so once you're done with that, um, you can add, you know, combined feedback um, for partially correct answers, correct answers, so forth. Um, for multiple cho tries, you can give penalties and hints. There's a lot of options in here. Uh, for us, we're just going to save our uh, changes. And let's go ahead and preview uh, the question. So um, it doesn't, it does show you the version. Um, I don't see where, let's check the comments. They can comment on the question. Um, this is for uh, our view. So that's what the question looks like. Um, all right. So let's also uh, do a new question. And this time, let's do a true and false to show how this works. It's a pretty common question type. So let's go back to our example questions. Here's our true and false. And I'll go back here. We'll paste it in, we'll paste it in again. And these are the same settings. And the correct answer here is true. And so it's gonna create that for us. Um, and what the heck, let's just try the standard instructions and see what um, what it does. I didn't see anything last time, so save changes. And let's preview that question. And here it is. Um, still not seeing the um, instructions, but uh, there's our question. So we got true and false. It created that real well for us. Um, and you do get duplication of the question here. Um, but I just, this is just how I've always done it because when you're looking here, you can see which question is which. Uh, sometimes I load banks and it'll be just question one, question two, question three. And it, it's you have to open each one to find a question when you're looking to find one to edit it. So let's also do another question type. So let's do a new question. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try out a matching. Matching is tricky, um, but a lot of people like it. So for our matching question, um, kind of jump down here. Uh, we got the basic instructions. So that's going to go up in our question name and text. And it's match each, each concept with its definition as presented by John Locke. So you got your feedback and um, same settings here. And you can shuffle these as well. Now the answers come in threes. You, you basically want to have the question and the answer that it matches. 
and that constitutes a pair. Another pair and another pair. Um, and then if you want more, you can do three more. So you kind of have to do them in, in threes. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's just how this uh, module, this question type works. So for our um, questions, let's go over here and I've got a nice little answer key made up here. Uh, so number one, uh, we're gonna choose um, this, put this in for our question. And the answer is gonna be uh, answer um, A. So we want state of nature. Copy that paste that in, and then we go to the next question. The next question is going to be um, right here, and the answer is gonna be three, so copy that in, put that in here, go to here, grab answer um, B, sorry, we want B, copy, go here, paste, let's go here, grab this one, and that's gonna be answer C, so copy, paste, and let's grab C, natural rights, copy, and paste. I have for this, we're just gonna do the three. Um, we're gonna go ahead and save changes. So now, when you preview this question, you're gonna get that matching, and the way the matching works is you get these drop downs. you got these, like so, and voila. Um, you can even display some options here. I was just wondering if um, it would let you scramble these, but I think it's set to do that in the question type. So it should win the question deploy. So there's that, and then we'll go ahead and shuffle. Now this shuffle shuffles the questions. Um, and so that's how you do a multiple choice. Let's go ahead and add another question type and let's cover, um, we did matching. Short answer, short answer can sometimes be tricky. I would make it so that your answer choices are just one or two words, then this will um, effectively auto grade. Um, so we got our short answer question here, um, copy. And we're gonna go here and paste that in twice. Um, now this stuff stays the same. Um, you want, as far as case, I would say no, it's not important. They just have they just have to spell it correct. So let's grab um, the answer, which is tabula rasa, and put this in here. Um, answer one. All right. So now you could give additional answers that would be accepted as correct, and we got to put the grade here as correct. So you might account for spelling errors, or if there's another term for the, you know that's the same thing, you might include that. You kind of want to guess as what. The st guess what the students might put in and what you're willing to accept as the correct answer if you want to do multiple uh, correct answers. So, and you can also you know, give them partial credit, again, with that, with that great amount um, for an answer that's close but qu not quite right. You can still give some credit if you would like. So we'll go ahead and save changes. Um, and we're gonna do another question type just to cover the, the, the major ones. Um, I wouldn't worry about numerical, but I did wanna demonstrate um, an essay question. Essay questions will not um, auto grade. Uh, they're, gonna they're gonna come into the grade book and you would need to um, look at the individual answers that are provided. So um, if we go up to our Word document here, you could find uh, essay. So here's the essay question um, and you do something like this. Now, you may be wondering, well, um, why uh, then is there, um, uh, there should be correct the correct answer uh, response template. So response template, this is tricky. If you type in here, um, you can give instructions, which I don't think I created any questions. Um, Well, we can put this in just as kind of a disclaimer, but I want to make sure. Uh, if you wanted to give them a hint or instructions, um, I'll show you how this works. Uh, if you put a response template in there, you might give an example. Then you got uh, information for graders. So if you wanted to give uh, someone who was not you that was going to be grading this um, some indication of what would be a correct answer, then you would go ahead and type that in 
here as well. So let's go ahead and save changes and see how this question presents itself. You can see here that that is already filled into the um, into the where the student would would write their answer, um, and they can also upload files. Um, so they would normally, um, you know, delete this and just type over it. So I don't. I don't usually do that, so I'm going to go back in and edit this. And to edit the question, you just go and click the gear. And we're going to wipe that portion out of the response template. Um, but if you're um, a grader, let's see where that's going to show. So let's review this. Um, that should show up. Um, Let's see preview options, display options, and custom fields. I believe that'll show up back in Gradebook. So maybe we can check that. And that's so you can see. Um, there's the question, um, and it says version two because we've we've changed it. So, all right. So that's that. That covers the basics. Now, if you're wondering about these other question types, um, you can uh, jump over to uh, Moodle.org. And when you get to Moodle.org, if you look, you log in, um, you can search uh, quiz questions, and you should be able to find the Moodle Docs page. Um, that's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, so quiz question types, and it's a Moodle Docs. That's what we want. And when you get here, it's gonna it's gonna thoroughly cover every type of uh, question. So it shows them all there. Then you've got calculated, calculated multiple choice, calculated simple, drag and drop, drag and drop markers. It'll uh, it'll also give you instructions on how to create these questions. Um, it covers ma uh, matching and close uh, embedded answer types. Um, you know where you got like a sentence and they have to add a word. Um, so it, it does a really good job and it thoroughly covers all of these uh, question types. And then you can get into third party question types as well. I don't think we have any of them installed. So this is a great resource um, if you are stuck and need, uh, want to do some very specific types of questions. So if we go back to the quiz now, uh, we should be all set and we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five. But wait, we put in the matching. So the matching each concept, that would probably be worth, since we had three, uh, three points. So we're going to edit that and we're going to make that worth three. Hit enter. So we've got a total worth of three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be worth seven points. I try to make every uh, thing like a, any type of assignment worth at least 10 so it's divisible by 100 and easier to grade. And students don't just end up getting one answer wrong and failing you know, the, the quiz or something. It's like if you have a five point quiz or a four point quiz or whatever. So um, let's go ahead and save that and jump back into our course and then take a peek at our quiz that we've just created. So we look at it here and it says preview. So this is what the students are gonna see when they take the quiz. We got. 10 questions per page, so all of them display. You got your, uh, it's scrambling, you've got the uh, true and false, then you've got the short answer, then the matching, uh, and then you've got the multiple choice, and then the essay, and, um, and an area if you want them to upload files. So uh, that's pretty much how to set up a basic quiz. Um, uh, there will um, the next video will probably cover questions and creating categories and question banks. Uh, and that starts to make it a little bit quicker. And then there'll be uh, videos that uh, um, follow after that as well. Hope you've enjoyed.